Play data monitors all radio stations in your region and chart songs by number of plays. Welcome to the PDC Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the PDC Podcast. Yay. It's another wonderful show with your boy, Yay. DJ W-O to the S to the K to the E. And your girl with the forehead and the eyebrows, Dami. Oh, You're such a hater. I do not have a forehead. I'm five head gang and I'm also doing the running man as we speak because I'm so excited to be here today. How's everybody doing? Why, why, what's why I doing running man? And that forehead, I hope you've polished it because, you know, that's one of your biggest assets. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, say, so say, a hater. Say. I, have uh, a very, I have a very cute four or five head and you know what the boys I'm not, are I'm not, not hating. complaining the men I'm actually like it, it. Stop i'm enjoying complaining. your forehead no i'm not complaining i'm you enjoy enjoying my your forehead. forehead i love it mm, i love it you, you love it well every time done. i need a mirror i just hey dami you could see, you look here please what's scary you are very very no, no, having a mirror forehead is nothing to be ashamed about it's wonderful you look you know me i'm bald right so if you want to see your own image just tell me to what's look scary? down on the floor you're very disrespectful oh wow Put wow. some respect on my five it's, head. It's not that deep. Uh, it's actually you, one, of, it's one of my selling points, actually. Mm. So that is on your resume, see? Yes, the boys are not complaining. We thank I God. Feel I feel it. I feel it. So what, what are we doing this week, Dami? What, what are we doing this week, guys? Oh, so we have a lot of things that we're going to be talking about. Plenty, we're going to be plenty. talking about current happenings between our Nigerian and, you know, Afrobeats and African artists, what's going on in their lives, sharing Ooh. a bit of good news. Just. You know, I like sharing good news. Yeah, and gossip and then too. And you're the gossip. Wow, me, huh? What's you my business? are the gossip. You're the one that gossips. But yeah. anyway, as I was saying, we're going to be sharing some good news about one of our favorite Afrobeats artists. Also talking about a lawsuit between two artists that used to be in the same boy group. Ha. Wow. It's very serious. So. And then group. later, we're going to be talking about, you know, how people consume and appreciate music, both in Africa and in the diaspora. And that's going to be a very in-depth, you know, topic. I'm excited to talk about that. Ooh. And of course, Wuske is going to be leading that, you know, with his insights and um, what do we call it? It's, um, inside knowledge, you know, because he, he claims have... he's a celebrity too. And he's wow. in the industry. Wow. So Who said he will that? share his industry tips and nice. everything. You are mm-hmm. lying on me. Don't lie on me. Lady. Excuse me. I'm not lying. I was just giving you props. Like, you know, you're part of the industry. Oh, shit. Me, but even though the way you said it, you said he says he was. Ah, but you said it. O'Shea Gonsep, which reminds me. Hey, Bob Risky is in America. Oh. <laughs> uh, wait, have Bob you seen Risky, him? Did you meet up I, with him? I, me? You know, he came to New York for one day. I follow him on Snapchat. He's in uh, he's in Chicago right now. He was mm. actually at a party in Chicago live. As in, he has fans who... Ha. <laughs> oh, she baddest. <laughs> so he was twerking with the best of them. Ah, he was twerking with the best of them. All those mamas and papas. Ah, Damn. But Brisky has crossed over. People don't even know. I mean, as long as they are paying him for, you know. No, he's getting paid fee. for appearance. Yeah, ah, you know Bob Risky as an Ijebu man. He's not doing anything for free. <laughs> <laughs> What's my own with the Risky, I beg? Leave me. Anyway, guys, we'll be right back after the break. Do not go anywhere. See you soon. Welcome to the PDC Podcast. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being patient. We're back. And now I'm going to talk about this lawsuit that I'm talking, I've been talking about earlier. I was just Uh, telling you. My question to you, is it a lawsuit in Nigeria or a lawsuit in abroad? I want to know how serious it is. Okay. Basically, Mm. Two-Face or AKA Tubaba is threatening to sue his former boy band uh, mate, Blackface, for defamation of character. So ah. let me give you the scoop behind this whole this whole mess, and I hope okay. he sues him because blackface has diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> so if you guys remember, you know, Two Face, Blackface, Face all used to be a part of Plantation Boys back in the days. They were very successful. They had hits. You know, people loved them. For those that don't know Plantation Boys, that means you don't know OG Afrobeats Nigerian music. Shout out to wow. Plantation Boys, Two Face. Face. yeah so they used to be part of a group and they were highly successful and after a while they broke up and everybody went about you know their own business two-face became 
very successful, the most successful in the group. Uh, mm -hmm. He became what we know today as Tubaba, you know, internationally acclaimed and known uh, artist from Nigeria. And FaZe also wasn't that far behind. He released an album, I think two albums that did That's quite popular, well. Yeah. But Blackface was just... Blended. I don't have words for him. He, he, he just, returned, he returned he just, to the civil service. Basically, he became a civil servant because none mm -hmm. of his songs were a hit. So, mm -hmm. I think there's a bit of jealousy where, where Two-Face and Blackface is concerned because whenever Two-Face is doing something great or Two-Face is being talked about for doing something that is amazing, Blackface always has something horrible to say. Mm -hmm. So this is something that has been going on for many, many years, but Two-Face never seems to, um, you know, respond to Blackface. But um, if you remember a few months back, there was supposed to be this protest, a uh, peaceful protest in Nigeria being spearheaded by Two-Face and a group of in, um, individuals to um, basically come out uh, and, um, you know, have a peaceful protest and match to talk to the government to help improve infrastructures and you know basically tell the government that they're not doing what they're supposed to do and highlighting where they're lacking and what mm -hmm. needs to be done because you know nigerian people expect more um mm -hmm. anyway there was a lot of chaos and drama about that time and they, i heard that you know two face was being you know threatened and you know bashed on the media by both politicians and apparently blackface was one of the people that they used to you know, try and rubbish to face his back. reputation. Yes, huh. you know, he was he collected some more change. So so that's the foundation of the lawsuit. Yes. That 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 occurrence. That occurrence, yes. Yeah. So mm. Blackface came on media, on social media, on the news, just basically chatting all rubbish about Two Face, things that were most likely untrue because you know, him and Two Face probably haven't even seen themselves in more than 10 years mm. and he went on with this spare, smear campaign trying to you know make two-face look bad trying to destroy yeah. two-face's brand and i think two-face and his managers eventually said you know enough is enough and they decided to send him a letter from his lawyers basically telling him it was a cyst and desist mm -hmm. basically stop saying stuff about um two-face and we want you to take back all the horrible stuff you said and apologize or else we're going to file a lawsuit in court. And um, apparently Blackface is not backing down and I hope they get him in court and they sue him and take him for the little change he has left. Well, I have a question for you, Dami. What's your business? Why are you hoping? What's your hope for? I are just you getting don't money? like haters. I think for me, the thing <laughs> is, if you're going to go out there and publicize and put into publication and say horrible stuff about people that are untrue then you should face the consequences like mm. hate much why are you a hater like live your I, life i think i think politics is poison of our people um everything is political in nigeria the, the health service the the churches the yeah, mosques everything, everything is political is, yeah so yeah so but i feel i feel blackface mm. deserves to be sued because he allowed himself to be an instrument of you know assassinating two-face's character and obviously because he already hates two-face the hatred is so deep you can see just speaking vile ah, that man is just too old to be out there acting like a little child I, I think it's not even unique to him i think a lot of nigerians are like that where no but when they black don't see a way out of face, their own problem blackface has been doing this for years yeah no what i'm saying is years. yeah yeah no so i, I i'm saying i'm saying that it, it, it probably be it, it will probably serve to the the deter other you know type of people that are trying to do the same thing because yeah, you're people just believe right. they can say they can say whatever they want and get away with it. I mean, this is no longer 1992. Like you get your ass. Yeah, there should out, be you know, repercussions right? if you're gonna say something, you know. Mm -hmm. Then if if you are lying and they decide to sue your ass and you be sued, I mean, I mean. I know Idi Amin is not a great person to quote. He said freedom of there's freedom of speech, but freedom after the speech, I cannot guarantee. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I tend not to quote dictators when I'm trying to make a point, but okay. I mean, Hitler also says some really nice shit, so but <laughs> excuse my language. I mean, what he says, what Idi Amin said resonates with me. Mm. You have freedom of speech, but freedom mm. after the speech. He cannot guarantee. Mm. So to all those there that are smearing people's character, going on a smear campaign, talking rubbish about people, please, free, free, open your mouth, pour it out. Yeah, but when, I mean, when, I, when it gets legal, 
don't come and say i beg sorry it wasn't like that it's the devil it, it will also serve to for us to see whether um blackface was smart enough to secure uh legal services before he decided to join that smear campaign so whoever is feeding I him mean, or who's blackface. telling him to the do guy that is not stuff. the smartest he's as smart as a bag you know wow he's not the wow. smartest you you seem very that's why i was asking do you see very personally involved in this like uh uh-uh. uh no, Slow I'm down, just, I'm sick. I'm sick of blackface. He's been doing this for years. Like, guy, if he paid this much attention to his career, maybe he would have a career. Like, wow. honestly, ouch. Like, this man is a non-factor coming out here, <laughs> trying to come against a man that is working hard, making his craft work for him. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, my, my, my is, point is, is how if, he feeds, if he's... this is how to face feeds his family. Like, don't do that. Yeah, but even that in its own, if. It, Two Face ignores Blackface, then he he doesn't give Blackface a platform. But he's been ignoring Blackface for many, many, many years. I mean, because I can tell you that so I don't much know. One I don't can know take. A, I say I take him you, down off with I, his I, I head. Can, I can tell you that I don't know a single Blackface song. I, so the, and if, Blackface and is, if, a, is a nobody. I'm sorry, don't nobody no, know him. But here's the deal: his claim to fame was Plantation Boys, and Plantation Boys was how many years ago? Please give me a break. By paying him attention and suing him or whatever, whatever, plant, uh, Blackface might even have an opportunity to re- rejig his career because no matter how much he rejigs it, him. he has no talents. Point you blank. See, you, 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 you seem you don't seem very objective in this like, matter. But I don't okay. want to be objective because I don't like mm-hmm. the kind of stuff he did. And me, you know me, I'm petty. I'm petty for days. I am petty labelle. I'm petty wap. I say take the oh, really shit. little cash he has left. Send mm. him to the washers. Take oh, the I money. See. Okay. By the way, Fetty Wap, for like six months, we have not heard any song from him. What's he's, good? He's he's on maternity leave. Is he, is he pregnant? <laughs> he I wish him more the He just best. had a baby. He has multiple baby mamas. So I, oh, I'm really? Sure, I'm sure one of them just gave birth. So he's on maternity leave. <laughs> wow. Uh uh. Bano Juke of Ikori Run. This one eyed guy is doing work, man. Mama, well, leave that yeah, one eyed on guy alone. No, no. You are calling him Bano Juke. Do you know how many babes are on his case? Ah, Fairly yeah, wap. And no, look, I, no, I don't, ah. I don't, I don't, in fact, I don't Let use me tell you. babes to you measure know, anybody's leave that anything. that one, no. Let me tell mm-hmm. you, for a man, I has mm. only one eye, but yeah. the money is making him attractive. Come on. <laughs> Leave that <laughs> that's thing how, alone. No. That's how people said 50 Cent was cute. I was like, what? 50 Who? Cent is ugly. 50 Cent? Yes. Actually, I think 50 Cent is actually cute. Yes, when of course. When he smiles. You think it's cute. When he smiles. Mm. Mm, when he smiles. Cute. He has a very good smile. But yeah, he has a $50 million smile. Congratulations. No, I don't think uh, that's, it's not because of the money. I think he's, he's cute. Oh, it's because of money. I'm sorry. I'll tell you that for sure. I've seen for him sure. smile and he has a cute mm-hmm. smile, but you know, 50 cents, that one, he's another troll. He's a troll. Anyway, anyway. I love him look, though, but he's a troll. Shout out to my boy, Banky W. He's ang. Yay. Hey, I'm so excited for him. Did oh, you watch the wedding like party? Crying. Did you watch the wedding party? Uh huh. I was so invested in that movie. No, I didn't watch. I it. think that movie is like the best Nigerian English movie that has come out wait, in like You said you were invested in the movie. Like, I was invested how? in it too. Ah, I've how? watched that movie four times. In fact, I just watched it for the fifth time, like almost thirty minutes ago. Wait, where? Where did you watch that? It's on Netflix. Oh, really? Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Swag. They put it on YouTube, you know? Oh. So I watched it. I've watched it like five times. I really love that movie. And I'm so happy that, you know, the love that they shared on screen has now, you know, manifested itself in real life. Because I think Adesua, Itomi, and Banky W make a very cute couple. Like, cute yeah, kids. It's not, about, it's not about cuteness. But no, I, I mean, cute I, kids, I, 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 I'm proud of Banky. I mean, I, I, well... Yeah, again, me, um, I'm not too much of an advo- well, I mean, advocate. Banky, uh, Banky has been in the house for too long. You should go and marry. It's about time. Thank God. It's, it's nobody's business. We're if, about you marry, to, if you don't marry, don't, you We're about to do Thanksgiving offering. In fact, eh, I'm, eh? Going to, I'm going to contribute to that wedding. You know, okay. uh, RMD is still single. So why are we RMD talking about is not here? single. RMD is very married. Don't you know he's married? No, he has a lie. I, 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 RMD I is married. It. See, he is married. Is he's he? been married for more than 10 years. Wow. His I'm first wife, his first wife pages. was Ajumobi. Ajumobi passed away from an illness more than 10 years ago. And then he ended up marrying, um, sorry, Ajumobi is the new wife. I'm sorry. His first wife passed. Wow. You, you already killed her. Wow. I'm damn sorry. It. 
his first <laughs> wife, I'm sorry, his first wife had a show on NTA back in the day. It's called, is it, I think, Mimo Fed Mijo. And she passed on from a sickness. And then he married another woman called Ajimobi. He's been married for years. Mm. He's been oh, married okay. for years. Okay, so um, I was of wrong. Of course, I would know gentlemen. that because you know I'm into RMD and all. <laughs> of course, now I want to be into all these guys with gray hairs on their beard and things. Somebody's <sighs> husband. Somebody's daddy. Somebody's grandfather. Calm down. Exactly. It's not that serious. But it's a good look. That means face your front. RMD is a good Face your front. Flavor is still single. Flavor is there. Shout out to Flavor. Flavor is not my. David Kinney. Please stop it. Uh, what am I anyway. going to do with Davido? Davido is my younger brother now. Oh, even the people that are pregnant for Davido are older than him. Go away. He has two Davido children is... now. Doesn't he have two eh, children? Two children, three children, five children. He's still my aburo. He's still my younger 30 brother. Thirty billion for it. Look, let me tell you. I'm like ten years old. Which thirty Davido, billion? But if, I beg. What? Davido. Davido. To... Davido is exist. Which in, in which currency, please? Naira or dollars? <laughs> That's all I want to know. The spirit of hatership, I pray it away no, from I you. No, I love Davido. I love Davido to peace. I love that song, uh, If. But that 30 mm-hmm. billion, I want to know which currency. Anyway, Sha, ladies Shout and out to David. And uh, Yeah, exactly. Shout yes, out to David. Congratulations mm-hmm. on Haley. I think they named the baby Haley. Right, oh, yes. Really? That's the baby's name. Congratulations on the new baby, Haley. Hopefully, uh, this time, they won't have drama like he had drama on Sophie Momoju. I mean, that's how everybody uh, you risk it too. Everybody's turning to a two face. Yo, it's so sad, man. What's up with the baby two-face mama trend with Nigerian celebrities and two um, face Afro beats, those guys. Afro beats celebrities. It's not even Nigerian celebrities. Even all across Africa. What's up with the baby mama mm-hmm. trend? Diamond platinum too. It's not the same it's thing. Not ce- it's not celebrity. I mean, celebrities worldwide, right? I mean, if if there's a lot of girls in your, d- um, somebody's gonna get pregnant. Anyway, these girls too are looking for a meal plan, and uh, statistically, yeah, they're looking for a yes. meal plan, retirement plan. So you know, they they I mean, they're trying to get pregnant. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm trying to get Oprah pregnant so I can and get some of these support money. some of these groupies that are known to like you know cut con- cut the condoms and stuff like that. You know, you can't put it past them. Wow. Hey, hey, I better watch out. There are desperate women girl, out there. Me too, I'm a celeb, you know. Girls talking are about, to, you know, talking about like cutting that. condoms and everything. Did you hear about this new trend, uh, statistics of men that when they have sex, they take off their condoms without informing their partner? Oh, it happens a lot. Happens yeah, they're, a lot. About to criminal, they're about to criminalize it. Because they're about oh, to com- really? They're comparing it to rape because the person did not get consent to do that. I would take off the condom. Yes. So it's well, about to be criminalized. I mean, I'm celibate, so I don't know about it, but I know you, people you, that... You, are celibate. Okay, continue. Where is the question mark? What do you know about me? That means I you say don't you are know celibate. Me. Continue. I rejoice with you. Keep telling yourself that. Wow. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, why are we such haters, man? I'm why not a hater. Just allow me? Scared. All I'm saying is what? your joy is my joy. We're all joyful for you. <laughs> okay, okay, we thank God. We thank God. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back very shortly with our main topic of the day. So yeah. uh keep it locked on the PDC podcast with don't DJ Oscar and Damio. Don't go anywhere. And go somewhere, but don't go far. Just go downstairs, <laughs> yeah. come upstairs. Let's do this. Uh-huh. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back. Facts, charts, entertainment, and music. The PDC podcast. Live in five, five four, three, two, one. We have lived off. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, me, and your girl, she. And we are back, DJ Wuske and Dami O. Excuse Wait, me. You're not a she anymore? Excuse me. What? Excuse me. Hello. Excuse I'm me. I'm with you here. It's your boy, Wuske Lee. Oh, God. Why and you, Dami O. <laughs> I just like when I call you Wuskeli. <laughs> don't distract me, this woman. Uh, don't be an agent Wuskeli, of the dark, is, dark what side. Is, what, is, what, is, what is this? Is he and this is she. And the, already, everybody, knows, everybody knows our gender pronouns. It's okay. Yeah, but then I, I said he, she, and then I gave them our names. Why are you so I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm sure I'm sure everybody knows what our gender pronouns are already. We don't need to like, you know, fi- force feed them with the gender pronouns. I mean, Thank I, you very I much. have a beautiful female voice. It's okay. You know, don't, don't, don't mess with it. Don't mess with you it. You have a very beautiful female voice. Yes. Oscar, really? Yes. It's... Next thing you're going to tell me that you got a booty and you want to twerk. Ah, uh, okay. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about. 
<laughs> Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about um, how people uh, listen, consume, and appreciate music um, in the modern day era. So, I mean, it's it's right now we're in, we're in May, May 2017. And it seems that artists are having are having a hard time determining how to how to um, garner the most out of their niche. You know how to reach their their markets, uh, the, people, the people who are listening. English speaker. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm trying to Oshé. communicate with the you know with the English graduates. Anyway, communicate, please. Yes. Yeah, so 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 the idea is this, right? As an artist that's new that's coming into 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 the arena how do i okay first of all who's my audience so some people their audience is uh, a label right the music label so they want music labels to see to get visibility on their music as much as possible um others their audience is direct so they love the music and they just want to share their music with other people so their audience is the average you know person either on the road or on social media now others, others, their their audience is just themselves. They just want to make. <laughs> How can your audience be yourself? Yes, yes. You just you just want to make music. No, something. Yo, there's some people. And I'm, what's it? Wow. The reason is I've been in different phases of that, right? Where tell them, tell them, give I us make, some wisdom on your phases. Can you stop that? <laughs> I made music to pitch to labels, right? And then at a certain point in time, I just felt like making music, and I just made it, and I enjoyed it, and I didn't care if anybody else enjoyed it. And then at a certain point, I made music for the people. Like, hey, you know mm-hmm. what? Oh, shit. This, this mu- <laughs> music maker. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. I'll stop talking now. If you're not kidding. Oh, shit, Quincy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll make a song and I'll be like, you know what? Let me tweak it this way, this way, this way. Because this is what people like to hear. And let people just enjoy it. Download it, put it in their playlists. And so, you become a household name, right? For Quincy it, Jones, Lomo. For instance, there's this one of my ringtones that I made. Like, I took an iPhone ringtone and I made it into like an Afri- Afrobeat type thing. And then people were like, hey, I was walking the streets oh, in New York. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, I was walking the streets in New you? York and somebody listened to, well, my name is on it. So I don't know if any other you're DJ slightly, was guest. You're, sli- you're slightly talented. Can you get out? Clap for yourself. Go away. Clap for yourself. Go away. Clap for yourself. Mm, leave me alone. Clap for yourself. Leave me alone. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's what i'm saying is like sometimes you i mean in in order to become a household name in music right yeah. you have to you have to do the chance the rapper thing right like make the music you love <clears throat> and then put it out there in a way where people want to be a part of it they want they want to use it in different ways they want to use it as a ringtone yeah. they want to mm-hmm. they want it to represent who they are so for instance the other day i was talking to someone on one of his lines and then his other line rang and that line like that that it, it rang like the ringtone that I had made, and that made me seriously proud, right? Because wait, are you, I hope you're charging for this. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's on iTunes. Yeah, yeah. My ringtone is on iTunes. Collect your money. Oh, Collect definitely. your money. The, the thing about the it bag. is, you only get maybe like ten percent of the revenue of iTunes. As so. Remy Ma would say, secure the bag. And Remy Da would say, it's Mother's Day, so leave it to Remy Ma. Anyway, oh, that was that a great was so joke. Dry. That was Ew. a funny joke. Anyway, don't do that again. Oh. <laughs> So what we're talking about today? Like my body is having an allergic reaction. Don't do it again. Please, Claritin. Claritin will help you. Um, so, so, so how do? So how? So we're we're going to talk about Africans and how how they consume music, and then um, African artists um, at different yeah. levels. How do they approach this? This? Uh, how are they connect? Are they even connected to their audience? Like, do they know what the people want? Not uh, really. Yeah, so so the the cases I want to the case studies I want us to look at objectively and individually. Um, Chance the rapper, what he did with his album and his success. Yes. Um, I want us to talk a little bit about um, uh, a little bit on the concert level. So I, I know Tidal um, uh, partnered up with uh, Afro Music, uh, one, one, music. One, one African music, music fest. fest. Yeah. In uh, London. In London, yeah, for, for the live streaming of that show. And I want, mm. I want us to talk about that a little bit. And then mm-hmm. from there, we can we can decide where we want to go. Okay. Yeah. So, so Chance the Rapper won three Grammys um, for a streaming-only album. Shout out to Chance the Rapper. And and I feel that he was very successful in doing that, even though he it, it was released for free on SoundCloud. Yeah. So, 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 I mean... Uh, do you think enough artists are doing this? Like, uh, uh, or I mean, 
I think for him, for being an artist that was being in the, that was in that is independent yeah. and not with a major record label, his main concern as an artist was doing music for his fans and his fans being able to access to access to, to have access sorry mm -hmm. to the music yeah. so he wasn't more he was more concerned with his fan base not really the label or the business part of it, it was more about you know this is who i am this is my music this is what i'm good at people are feeling it i'm gonna give it to you guys just the way you guys would love it mm -hmm. and appreciate it yeah so so where's the balance now so because millions more will hear your music when it's free on soundcloud yeah than than would hear it when it's marketed at you know 199 per track on itunes or you know mm -hmm. 1999 for the whole album but yeah. you, you also want to make the money. But here's the here's the rub, and here's where he the... he took a gump, he took a gamble being a new artist that people didn't really know about, and mm -hmm. he's so big right now. If he decides to go through the normal one ninety nine, yeah, you know iTunes, whatever, people would actually buy his album and pay for it because they know what he's cut, he's yes. capable is. Yeah, so they so, know what he's capable of. So ideally, I'm, I'm so from a certain point of view, we could say that an artist is better served by doing free doing the best they can and releasing it for everyone and then yeah, afterwards so it gives them they a lot of sell. exposure yes after all, so exposure is important right yeah so let's especially if you have a craft you are no you're a nobody in the music industry mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know you but yeah. you want to reach a huge audience all mm -hmm. around the world mm -hmm. that is a good business model Okay, so let me put down exposure as point one. So, um, point number two, we're talking about um, uh, One Africa, right? So, uh, another medium by which artists get their music out there is they do live concerts. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, they, they, they'll buy out a venue, and then they, you know, they'll they'll come out and they'll they'll play to to the people now. Yeah. That, that now, um, this past weekend there was the uh, One African Music Fest in London, mm -hmm. London, Ju London, UK, and over there. In you the, mean the UK? The UK, yeah, yes, yes. However you pronounce you mean the it, London, UK, whatever. <clears throat> Clear my throat. At the Wembley Arena. Oh gosh. Okay. So it was. <laughs> so um. So so actually Such it was. Such a hater. Yeah. Well, it was actually a good concert. Um, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen clips of the performances, okay. and the cr the crowd was into oh, it. Oh, it was like packed. Hundred percent. It was packed. It no, was aside packed. From, aside All from it, kinds it of people. Packed, yeah, it was the crowd was it into it a hundred percent, and yeah, and what what I see and my observation was that they're realizing that there's a cross section right for fans, mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. you can sell more if you are live streaming on official channels. Yes. In addition to selling out a big arena. Yes and, and, and no. And, and putting and putting money into the production value. Now, so I'll, I'll do two things. Right? I'll tell you the good parts that I heard about it. And then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll highlight the, the cons that some, like I heard from certain channels. So yes. good, good parts. It was well marketed, right? So before, Very well marketed. Beforehand, they had done their work like months and months ago. Like I would, I thought the the concert was next weekend. Like, and then I was like, wait, May? It's in May since February. Yeah. I've been seeing this thing on my timeline, mm -hmm. social media, Twitter, everywhere on radio. And then, um, so that was it was very well marketed. Second, they got like the best, of the best. So that is the most popular artists from uh, around around Africa. Africa, yeah, South Africa. They had Casper, uh, Casper from South Africa. There Casper was Adilo. Yeah. yeah, there was um, Davido. Like it's David it, it was, it was it's, much. It's it was not much. Davido. It's it was David much o. better than you know the first. It represented Africa more mm. compared to the first edition they had in Brooklyn. Yeah. So yes, they were able to. So they've done this concert twice already. They did it once in New York and then they did it once in Houston, and. The, the news had already spread, right, that they were doing this. And the first couple of concerts, they were mostly Nigerian artists and there was barely yes. anybody from anywhere else. Yes. But now that, you know, the... the no, there was only one artist from... It was da Diamond Platinum Diamonds or Diamonds Platinum from well, was Tanzania. He, was he in both New York and Houston? He was in Brooklyn. He was in Brooklyn. And I don't know if he was in Houston, though. No, I don't know about the Houston part, but I know he was in Brooklyn. Okay. Um. Yeah, so now we're adding more people to the roster, right, from around Africa. 
But the, the thing about it is with with all this good marketing and everything, so it's well marketed. This they 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 did it in a world class fashion where the setup on on stage, you know, the concert vibe was well done. Right? That's the same thing they did in Brooklyn as well. It was the setup was amazing. Yes. It was professionally done. It was really well done. Now, so those are the good parts, right? Now the parts of it that were now um, the, I'll, I'll start from there. There are two cons, right? The first con was, and a, a lot of people were saying this that most of the artists were miming their songs, so they had a live band on stage. You know, mm-hmm. they had live band set setups and everything, mm-hmm. but most people were playing their tracks and then you know singing along yeah. like like techno did. Like they said, techno did that where he because you know a lot of Afrobeat artists are not really professionally trained for live performances and to be honest when they do shows back home and all around africa they i think we the fans let them get away with mediocre performances because we keep paying them to show up so they don't they don't really put time to practice and perfect their act in that particular area so 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 that was one. We've made was, it acceptable. That was one con, and and I and I believe that I mean there's a lot of take homes from this, a lot of takeaways that Africans need need to learn from that. And then second yeah. was, um, was they did not start. They started an hour and a half late. They started late in Brooklyn. Started and, late in Houston. And and they started they, late. And um and all these arenas don't mess around. Like if you start late, it doesn't matter. You will still end on time. Exactly. There's no a big sa, a big yeah, man. They don't do all that. nobody's paying extra for that. And nobody's begging anybody. And the exactly. People have to get home to their families who are going to pack up. So and if you're going to keep them there extra, you got to pay. Yeah. So even 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 that, you have to you know have to sign that agreement ahead of time. So it's not. And yeah, and they would have told you in the agreement. You go over time, you're going to charge you X amount of money. So, so 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 yeah. So it it was they said it was during somebody's performance that they cut the lights, like they during Olamide's performance. They they literally just turned everything off. Mm, actually, no. During Olamide's performance, mm-hmm. um, he was still singing a song. And I remember they cut off the music. Yeah. And he was kind of, him and the crowd did a little a cappella version of the song for like a few seconds. And then, yeah. And then they ended Such the a shame. Show. But that's what they did to Davido too in Brooklyn. You know? That's what so, happened so with Davido. So Davido was the last performer. The, Davido was the last, at least I think, well, to my knowledge, everybody that was supposed to be there had performed. Mm. And I know Davido had brought out Swiss Beats and Swiss Beats had gone back. Davido was um, still on his um, set. I think Davido was supposed to do an hour set. Yeah. But because of, you know, the late start and everything, um, they cut off the music at some point. And yes. that was so disgraceful because, I mean, like, Davido is a celebrity. Like, how dare you put him on stage to experience that? Yeah. You know? So 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 this is so so where I'm going with this is so we so that happened and I, I believe that um, the African music industry is still very much in its infancy. It, That's in, not an excuse. It, that it, is not an excuse. So I'm not making excuses for for what happened. Okay. Um, I'm talking about these tools now, right? All right. So the, the how people listen, consume, and you know promote. And, and I also want to talk about the title music. thing too. The okay, go ahead. I feel like it was kind of good to have title stream it live and whatever, mm-hmm. but I think the main focus is more on the, you know, they starting to realize that ah, Africa is like the next big thing, you know. Yeah. So everybody, all those big companies out here, are all trying to get a piece or a slice of the cake of the Afrobeats. Cake. Yeah, because they'll see that they'll have they'll have yeah without without more quite subscriptions um, for people who want to watch you know live shows. Yeah, but like that only works for people that you know let's say here and the or in the, in, in Europe. Like, I don't think title is a thing back home. Yeah, yeah, is it? I mean, yes, I think there. I think it is. Really? Um, yeah, I don't know for a fact, but I know. Quite I would a have few- to fact check that. Yeah, there. Unless there are part- people that already have the title from here, but I don't think title is. A major streaming, whatever. Yeah, so I, yeah, I don't. That, have, that's I'll, even I'll if check, it's available in yeah. Africa. Yeah, I'll check on that. Um, but so 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 here's the deal: is that so in using these tools, right? Our artists need to understand what the fans need from them, and and it's not. And a lot of African artists get this wrong. 
it's not always swagger. It's not always I'm a big boy. It's not always I got money. It's not always this and that. Yeah, Your you music, forgot one extra tool. I'm sorry, what? Very important tool. What? Data monitoring. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, I would have included data monitoring. It's but, very important. But, but yeah, because would, that allows the artist to see what the fans I, yeah, are I would, feeling. I would, I would have included that. But the the issue is, um, it, the ubiquitousness of it, right? So, mm-hmm. for instance, real data monitoring only exists in Nigeria. True. And so, other countries are still yet to you know to climb on board. Mm-hmm. And and you know realize the value of that, and then um, again, uh, it's radio data monitoring that we have. Yeah. And 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 what happens, especially in the states, um, where mm-hmm. where you know, data monitoring is is yeah. know, really happens. Billboards. A lot. Yeah. Is is that you find that a lot of money passes hands when songs are when songs are played on the radio. That's why you sit down. You sit down and listen to the radio for 10 minutes and you hear Mask Off three times. Yes. Because the Mask Off people, w- which is maybe Universal Records or Columbia Records, some record label, knows that they put they put money here, 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 and here so that that song... To make gets, sure that Mask Off is a hit. Is a household name, yeah. 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 So, 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 so but, but you're absolutely right. Um, uh, broadcast data monitoring is a very important tool in that it helps... It helps in in uh, in in making the music popular, at least driving yep. driving your content into everybody's lips, right? Yes. And then people will now want to come to your concert to listen to you sing it exactly. live. Exactly. You can kind of tell, you know, how your music is doing well as well. What are people feeling? What are people not quite feeling? Yeah. You know what, what what are the requests saying and that? Yeah. Yeah. So so you're yeah, absolutely right, and I'm going to write that down. So um. So, so coming back to it now, um, I, 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 I like the cross section of using the one mus- one Africa Music Fest concert mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and using Tidal to stream it. Yeah. Right, and and so so that you could sell out arenas and still have seats sold, you know, on at home, so people can actually put it on their TVs and watch the concert, you know, as it's happening live. Now, the idea is this, is if you're going to use those tools, be responsible in your using of those tools, knowing that the world stage, everybody's watching. Very so, true. You so, mess up, they see it. You do they well, see they see it. Yeah, so if it's you, live. You can't if, yeah, edit. You, one and a half hours is a lot of time to a lot of people. And so if, if, if you skip, if you don't start, Within one hour, I probably tuned off, and then somebody calls me up and says, "Oh, they've started eventually." I'm like, uh, "I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm already, I already started watching something on Netflix. I'm not going to stop that." Exactly, you're over it already. Exactly. So, so you know, people, you know, we we need to make sure that we're not only ready on the surface in logistics, yep. and we've paid for the venue and whatever. We need to be ready to start immediately when we need to start. Because True. the only... Because somebody said that the reason the One Africa Fest didn't start on time was that um, people hadn't entered the arena on time. So it was still maybe half full or a lot of people weren't there yet, but that the artists were already ready to start. And I was So like, they should have started the show. Started with the low arcs and started it. I mean... They should have just started with I whatever they Tiwa, had on I think schedule. Tiwa, I, I got into... When I got into um, the Brooklyn... Um, See, you're part of the problem. You went the late. The Barclays Center. Why no, go I, had to go, I had to go to work. Oh, First of all, okay. I had to go to work. Okay. Before I came back home, changed. Mm-hmm. Um, Tiwa was already performing. Mm. I remember while walking in, um, the security at Barclays was really swift. They were mm. very good at getting people in. Yeah. Um, but, like, they didn't wait for people to, although they started late. After a while, they were like, you know what, let's just start this. And they started. Mm. It, it's, it's, so, it's, it, it's a good thing for us to get our music out there and to use, our, you know, the tools appropriately. Um, I'm still going to, I'm coming from the concert arena now. We're going to go back mm-hmm. to the individual mm-hmm. level. But it's it's a good thing to to use those tools. But then we need to use them properly to the best of our ability. If you are mm-hmm. streaming to the world, if you are doing a concert in a world class arena like the Wembley, um, 
you need to make sure that the world is, is seeing, on point. Yeah, that they are seeing the best, you know, that... Do you, you know, know part that, of that, the problem? Part of the problem? Part of the problem? And I, I noticed part of the problem with that one music, one Africa music fest, is, um, you know how we have this Nigerian mentality of how to conduct business and how to do business, whereby people don't necessarily pay the right people or have the right people on the job or have the right people that are experienced on the job. I, I think that I think that, that Nigerian factor played a lot into the experiences they had in all locations. No, New I, York, I think it's, Houston, I think it's this. and London. I think it's this. Um, you, I mean, aside from the Nigeria factor, which I don't really like to say because it's not only Nigeria, people, Nigerian people. That are well, late, I can, I can, a Nigerian, I, all Africans are late, but the organizers are Nigerians. So, yeah, it's, so, it's so the this, Nigerian this is my, factor. This is, this is my point is if you're doing a world class thing, right? You are surrounded with the right people. Look, the people who, are, because the, on the Wembley side, right, those guys also have their own organizers co- coordinating with our Nigerian organizers, mm-hmm. and our organi- and our organizers said seven p.m. So even the Wembley people will be pushing you. No, to what start I mean, the time. organizers, not the Wembley people. I mean, no, the no, people no. that uh, put the thing together. The logistics. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is if, with logistics. If, if a on- show starts at seven. You should not be advertising on the flyers and the promo that it starts at seven. You tell people the show starts at five. No, no, no. That see, way see, people are already real, getting in. I, I, no, no, no. The real world does not work like that because Wembley, right? You will not allow know, you to put their name. We deal with Nigerians. Hold you on, know, it's on. an Af- it's an African show. You know yeah, how your is, people are. You know how your so this is how this is where the problem is. Demographic are dummy. This is where the problem is, right? We are all human beings, and you are working in london right Mm -hmm. you cannot put the wembley's name on a flyer that starts at the wrong time first of all the city is gonna have to know when you start so that if something is the problem at the concert the announced start time is not going to be, or if you need no, a fire, you need a fire department. I get what you're trying to say. You're yes, yes. So you don't, you, you don't do in the professional if world. If you're going to do an event and it yeah. starts at seven, they mm-hmm. should have paid enough for that place for people to start getting in from five. I, I mean, you know, you know, it's, so it's, again, it's not even a crowd especially, control. Especially knowing your your audience. Your uh, yeah. audience was, it's a, it's a show showcasing it's, African music and whatever, and you know mm. the target audience, and you know we do have... We are tardy as a people. Majority of us are tardy. So you should have been able to do the logistics around that. That allows people to get in on time. Look, uh, Radiohead does not have eight heads. Radiohead does a concert. They say 7 p.m. 7 p.m. They start. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 does not have nine heads. You get Mm -hmm. to the movie theater at the time that is slated to start the movie. And you catch the movie. It's mm-hmm. not a foreign concept at all to start on time. So there's no special case. Um, that, like, we we, we to continue to we make... We Africans that do that, shows exactly. in Africa, it's a foreign concept. We're yeah, you need to late. stop. And that's what I'm saying. Is we do not need to do... That, that is just bizarre. It's a cultural it's bizarre problem. To give, it's, it's not... Look, it's bizarre to give ourselves leeway that we know it's Africans. We need to do this. No, because then this one Africa problem will just persist. We True. need to we need to be on time. We'll say we're go- like for instance, Bez, right? Bez, the artist, right? The the guitarist, the the musician mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. Nigerian. He does all his concerts in Nigeria. If he says seven p.m., he starts his concert at seven. Everybody that's going to a, a Bez concert that doesn't get there on time is missing out. Mm-hmm. And so and that and that and that is how it should be. You be on time to do like, but people are never late for job interviews. So where is the balance? Like, what do you mean? Like, I mean, like I was saying the other day, like people will come to a party. I'm DJing, right? People come to a party like two, three hours late, and they come right up to the DJ and start yelling that I haven't played any African music. I'm Look, like, bro, you've if, been here if, for like less than ten seconds. <laughs> if, if I yeah, if I, I'll start carrying a baseball bat now, smack people on the face because uh, you will you, get arrested. I mean, yeah, they'll get arrested for 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 for, for messing up my vibe. And you will get arrested too. Because because that that oh, so uh, let me tell you exactly what happens when somebody comes up to me. Then I'll now go into hip hop and dance hall like you know because you're the petty. Vibe. That's how you are. No, we know no, that. It's, we know it's that. It's because we know that. it's because the people on the dance floor. 
who are dancing to hip hop and uh, and dance hall music and have been here for two hours. They don't have two heads. Who are you, the prince of Egypt? So now <laughs> come come in two hours late and then come and say, hey, play, play Lagbaja. Um, my friend, I will Where beat you, you up with my left shoe. I, I like so, I don't so, okay, uh, I don't support violence. No, no, I mean I'm I'm not, I, of course I'm not violent or anything. I'm just saying we we are so confident in our lateness. Yes, and it's it's appalling. I, if, if I'm DJing a wedding, I'm there three hours before, and then I set up right, and then the band comes in twenty minutes before the wedding and is supposed to start. No, and then they now come to me and tell me I have to move my speakers. I tell them, brah, been here. If you need speakers moved, you move them yourself. So the band will go and set up in the corner. Because mm. first of all, when I got there early, when I was supposed to get there, the organizer says the DJ is here, the band is here. When the band comes and decides that they don't want to be here, I'm sorry, but you didn't come on time. We could have done that before because it's just me carrying my speakers and my mm-hmm. speakers are huge. I'm not moving anything because you've disrespected your own work and you've disrespected mm-hmm. my own work by coming late. And so so at the end of the day, that particular wedding, I remember, they were like, we're ready to start because it's in America, right? Mm-hmm. And the wedding venue is only, they close at 11. And so you're the just MC- coming 20 minutes to when the thing is later to stop. When did and, you do that you're, Yeah, you're screwing in drum sets and setting up microphones. And the MC was like, we're about to dance in the family of the groom, family of the bride. So the DJ has to start. And I'm doing the work of the band. So so it's endemic. And we need, we need, it, it, it's everywhere. And it needs to stop. It needs to stop. It just needs to stop. Uh, it's, but, it's, it's disgraceful. <laughs> I've gone, I've gone way, way too far because uh, now we're concentrating on time. We need to come back to these tools. Yes. So, <laughs> so it's important to know that the world is watching, but um, our African artists have kind of forgotten the entertainment portion of what they need to do. This new generation of African artists. Yes. Yes. So, so I, I admire, you know, Two Face. He performs very well. Um, on stage, flavor does well with the live band, all those things. Femi Kuti. All, yeah, all those guys are yeah musician, musician, musicians. But the new generation of musicians need to realize that they're not only selling their music; they're selling selling their brand. It's an act. Yes, yes. It's supposed so, to be so, entertaining. I don't want you to jump in on stage, miming like a little kid with microphone on. That's disgraceful. Let's even even let's even not even talk about the concert tour now. Let's talk about social media. So we want to see. Um. Uh. So, so yes. I want to see a good representation of, you, of African art, um, artists. Yes, exactly, it, it, and it's what it's one of the things that that a lot of people miss out. I was having a conversation with an artist the other day, and I was like, "Look, people are not only just waiting for you to drop tracks. Mm-hmm. If you did different things with your music, people would enjoy it more. If you dropped exactly. lyric videos, like if you dropped a video of your song." And, you know, you had somebody animate lyrics around it. Mm -hmm. And then it's fun to look at. People would key into that, you know, as well. As a different way of enjoying your song. So that in in your head, in in the consumer's head, they're seeing different images of Mm -hmm. how the song, you know, Mm -hmm. could relate to their lives. Definitely. So, so, so yeah. So, we we really, really do need to just... um, Get our acts uh, together and do better. uh, Exactly. We need to look at the industry as a whole. So on an individual basis, each artist needs to understand that their exposure, which is one of the first things I wrote down, exposure Mm -hmm. is connected to every single thing they do around their Mm -hmm, brand. mm -hmm. So, So not only just that you should practice with a band all the time so you don't go out miming on stage. On a worldwide, you know, concert. Yeah, how you be on a worldwide concert with big acts and your mind me? Is this, is this not a high school showcase, yeah, it's, talent it's, show? It's, it's really sad. But, sad. but then you, you also need to be able to um, showcase your music on social media. So exactly. not, only just, not, not just uh, upload a track to, uh, what they call it, um, to SoundCloud and then say, yeah. hey, here's my, here's my song, play. There are so many people, they, avenues they, that you can use to promote your craft. To, to show, yeah, to show people that, you know, so for, I, I could go on and on with examples, but, My dear. um, <laughs> um, I think we're, we're, we're a little bit beyond time now, but, um, um, Dami, which other tools do you think and how do you think our people are using them or how should they 
you know, adjust to using them. In the Honestly, age. I'm just going to piggyback off what you said, you know, do lyrical videos, um, you know, be it on YouTube, be it on your Instagram. Social media is a very big tool. How you represent yourself is very important. Do not get on stage and give a half ass performance and act a fool. You know, we need to get a, a, artists need to be aware of tardiness, you know, be there on time. Don't let the African factor be the problem because you know what we live in an era where social media has made african music more mainstream and we have a reputation to protect we don't yeah. want to look like a bunch of unserious people exactly. so they african need to music, take this more seriously yeah african music going mainstream but you don't want to um, and, inco uh, incorporate mainstream yeah. behavior it's and like, then uh, no and then another thing is you know I, um and African artists have this, um, um, what's the word? Um, they have this thing whereby when they reach a certain, uh, um, a certain level of success, they relax. But they don't mm -hmm. realize that you are, as, you, are, you are just as good as, you know, I'm looking for the right word to say. You have to be always better every time. You have to mm -hmm. set the record to, I'll do what you did the last time. That's what keeps you relevant. And that's what keeps a good artist having long um, longevity in the industry. So it's not like, oh, I've released three tra tracks, I've made it, I'm the ish, I'm making money, then I'm not going to work on my craft. No. It's mm. an ongoing process. The likes of Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, um, um, Nas, um, who, who else am I going to use? The great artists, Aretha Franklin, if they all sat down one day and said, oh, I've made it so I don't have to keep working on my craft or to keep working to improve my craft or keep working to outdo what I did the last time. They're not going to be known as legends and icons. Facts. Beyonce Facts. is not going to say because I'm Beyonce and I have the beehive and everybody bows down, you know, I'm not going to go and keep doing my vocal lessons or keep dancing or keep dancing and singing so that when my her performances will be amazing. It takes work. You just don't wake up one day and be a Beyonce. I mean, it's it, it, again, it's 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 a mentality. Work so, work so, ethic is very important. You have yeah, to work need, hard, keep it going, consistency. I think, and I think it, it it just goes to show that uh, uh, you know people. I mean, it's again, it's easy to 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 criticize it, from the it's, outside. It's the African mentality, to be honest, and it's not only in the music industry. You see it in lots of businesses whereby they reach a certain level of success and they feel like ah, i'm it so i don't have to to struggle as much but what they don't realize is your competition is not even yet born hmm. it might be some little kid out of nowhere that knows what it takes and has his talent he's talented and he's hard working because being successful is and i tell people being successful is a good 80% hard work and consistency mm. and a 20% talent. Anybody can be talented, but if you don't practice your craft, improve on your craft, what makes you different from the next person that can sing? That's, that's part of the work that goes into it is, is like you, you, I mean, uh, when you watch the Grammys, you just, you just imagine that uh, uh, Bruno Mars is out there performing Michael Jackson songs. Without <laughs> yeah, and the fans are to blame He's as not, well. African He's, fans yeah. are to blame. We allow them give us mediocre performances time after time, time after time. I mean, look at some of these artists. They're being paid to come to somebody's wedding to perform. They don't even look the part. There's no preparation. They're just up there putting the tracks on hopping up and down i mean i'm like someone just gave you millions like we the audience too we the music love of afro beats we need to do better too we need to stop accepting mediocre behavior and performances on my acts because you know what if we hold them accountable they will fix up mm. um i think i think we've we've hit a good number of of, of great points and and I mean, if anyone out there is listening from the music industry, I, I think I think um, uh, what we said goes without saying, but saying it also means that we are noticing and we're saying something, you know. Because at um, this point, we as Africans, you're not only when you embarrass yourself, you're not only embarrassing you, you're embarrassing us. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, on the world stage, you know, things like that shouldn't happen. Yeah, you, exactly. you know, someone could usually come to me at the office tomorrow and say, "Hey, did you hear about what happened?" And that's embarrassing because you yeah. are a representation of us, so you can't be yeah. out there being mediocre. Yeah, and, and to Paulo and, 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 and I have his, to now say to Paulo and his gang, um, his people, they did a good job, you know, get rounding the artists, doing the promo, and making a beautiful stage, but they need to do better with time management. I think I think after one time two can concerts, be a mistake. One time can yeah. be a mistake, but if it's if that's what you're known for, if and what they're not they're not careful about is one African Music Fest is a brand. If it's a brand that's synonymous with being late, starting late, artists being cut off, artists are not gonna want to come on their platform anymore. Audience members are not gonna want to pay for their shows anymore. So they need to be careful and figure yeah, out how to work around this because it's ridiculous. That was my big thing. That was my big thing because I could tell that uh, Jadena was really upset. He, I, I watched his I, video and he, was, he, he had every being, right. He had every right. He was being right. restrained. He was being restrained at, you know, not raging about it. He, but he, he was ha- upset because he, had every he was right because ready. He had first of all, practiced. he'd he practiced. Was, he, he was he ready. Traveled. And he supports everything African, we everything do. Nigerian, yeah. for that to now happen and have that thrown in his face and embarrass him in that yeah. in that level of come on. And so, some come people on. were now saying that some people were now saying that hmm, maybe they, he wasn't really even there. That it looks like Please, they just used him for let's promo. Stop. And let's that's stop what with Africans the conspiracy. Do. Let's that's, stop with the conspiracy theories, yeah, people. I mean, but, but at the end of the day, like, that's what people would talk up. up. Yeah, talk they messed about, up. Yeah. They messed yeah. up big time. And I won't be surprised if there's some other Joe Schmo out there. That's gonna take all the mistakes that Polo is doing and give Polo a run for his money and do it better. Because I mean, we all keep complaining. Is always good, right? We all keep complaining. Oh, there are people out there coming to jack our cultural appropri- appropriation and doing our things while we're supposed to be the ones doing it, but the ones that are doing it are messing it up. Hmm. So maybe if One Music Africa Fest has some competition, maybe they get their act together because this is appalling. Well, um, that was going to be my rant today, but uh, I'm just disappointed. Yeah, so you're going to have to find another rant. Okay, now, ladies and... I'm not ranting. I've already ranted already. Okay. (laughs) My rant was going to be about one music and, you know, I ranted out. Mm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. This is DJ Woske and Damio on the PDC podcast. And we're going to be having the PDC charts Yes, yeah, so let me up. go and do one so, shot because this shot alcohol yes, on the show. A shot ah. of water. Mm-hmm. Today is Mother's Day. I'm going to call your mom and say, "Look at what your daughter uh-huh. I'm grown. Oh, you're grown, so you can do shots on Sundays. Uh-huh. Is there, is there, okay. is there, is there a roster that says these days shots shall not be taken? What did they write in the uh-huh. Bible? You can't. Take you went shots to on church. To, you went to church today, and now you're Excuse taking shots me. of patrol. Guys, we'll <laughs> be right back. This is your girl Dami O and the stubborn <laughs> DJ will scare. Now, so okay, all right, we'll be back. Ororo no be crude pussy cat no be tiger, monkey at a chimpanzee, walk you, walk you, but I no be for monkey you. You wanna offer she big boy, swag out she follow. Walk you, walk you. Hey guys, my name is Adekunle Go, and you're listening to the PDC podcast. This is the best. Keep listening. We love you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the PDC podcast. It's DJ Woske with Dami O, and it's Hi guys. time for the PDC quiz. Play mm, data charts mm, quiz. Mm, so, Dami O, are you ready to mm, play this game? Always asking questions. Okay, well, let's I start. I, that, let's that's what start. a quiz is. Dami, let's did you ever do quizzes in school? Let's start. All right, fantastic. Okay, so, according to the most played songs in Nigeria 2017, week 20. Blood of Jesus. Yes. So, what song is number one? Again. PDC charts Nigeria most played songs in Nigeria week 20. What song is number one? I'm going to give you three options. Mm -hmm. First option Chain to the Rhythm by Katy Perry. Mm -hmm. Option number two I'm the One by DJ Khaled featuring Bieber, Quavo, Chance the Rapper, Lil Wayne. Number one, ba? Yeah, which song is number one? In Nigeria, I'm going to give you four. Right? I, I, yeah, I'm going to give you four options. Okay. Option number three, if by David O. Touch option me. number option number four, 
Juice or is it Juice by YC featuring I know that Mike one. Berry. I know that one. All right, what's the answer? It's called too much sauce, too much sauce, too much juice, too much juice, too much sauce, okay. too much sauce. Wait, wait, are you on the website? You did check the website. No. You're checking the website. I love that song, Die. I, I don't play the chachas.com. Are you checking? Uh, what okay, that? That, you're correct, you're correct, you're correct. That's number one. That's number you one. You are fake news. Here we go again. Did your worst care with alternative <laughs> facts? You, are you cheating? No, no but you're correct. It's you're correct. Too much okay. sauce, too much sauce. All right. All right. Too much one juice, too much juice. Don't All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, question number two. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's so, do it. According to the YouTube Music Charts UK, mm-hmm. week 18, mm-hmm. what song is number one? All right. All right, so option one, mm-hmm. Galway Girl by Ed Sheeran. Mm-hmm. Option number two, Swala by Jason Derulo. Mm-hmm. Option number three, I'm the one by DJ Khaled featuring Biba, Quavo, Chance the Rapper, and Lil Wayne. Mm-hmm. And then option number four, I'm in love with the shape of you. I'm in love with the shape with of you. Is that your final answer? Like a magnet too. Yes. Is, is that, Ed is, Sheeran, shape of you. Shape of you. Well, have you okay, heard, you're correct. You're correct. Have, you're you, correct. Heard the Akpala, have you heard the Akpala version of that by Terry Akpala? Martins. Really? Yeah, you, <laughs> Martins. I uh, love that song. A, oh, really? Ah, come on, be my baby. Come on. Come on, be my baby. Come on. Come <laughs> on, be you, my baby. Come on. Come on. All right. Be. All right. All right. Let's so, stop. So, question number three. Uh, yeah. Mm, excuse me. I'm on uh-huh. fire today. Yes, you are on fire. So, question number three. According to Play Data Charts, mm-hmm. which of these three things is DJ Wozke's favorite? All right. So, massage, oh, hold, massage, hold on, hold massage, on, wait, wait, wait. Let me give Let's you the far. options. He's massage. He's, okay. Wrong. That was wrong. You see? What these are the options. These are the options. Shape of You by Ed Sheeran mm-hmm. as option one. Option two. Humble by Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. Option three, mm. Nigerian Jollof. Nigerian Jollof, all day, every you're, day. But, you, but you're already wrong because you didn't even wait. You see, the trap, you I've been setting no, this you trap for you. You think you're smart. No, I've you been setting this trap. Let me tell you something. You know, these since are your, show this number one, your I've list. been setting you up. This is your list. Since, number one is since, massage. Number two is Jollof rice. So today, because no. I've been, you've been putting that question, I've been catching you. Massage, no, massage. No, you, you see, I've been setting you up. I've been setting you up since. I've been setting you up since. God is watching you. And you got it. God Wrong. is watching you. You and your next time, facts. You think you are smart. Continue. Next time, don't jump the gun. You are wrong. Which gun and who's jumping I, it? I, st- I still love massage, but massage wasn't even in the options. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining Thanks us for joining on us, the guys. show. Dami, tell the people that you love them. I love you, everyone. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. That is the next week after the next week, or maybe the week yeah, after that. Yeah, episode week before six. That. Episode six is lit. Is lit. That's where we are. That's where we are. We're on stage. Yeah, yeah. This episode. Ep- 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 episode. 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 Yeah. Episode. 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 Follow me. Episode. Episode. Okay, we six. got it. We got Number it. Number six. Okay. Okay, we're here, and um, we will see you guys soon. Appreciate see you it. Guys, Thank you so much you for you guys. listening. All right, take care. Don't forget to leave comments on the YouTube page. Let's discuss oh, what yeah, we talked true. about. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. Leave comments and comment and check out our charts on playdatacharts.com. But we have forgot. Spotify charts. All he's doing is thinking about <laughs> you your YouTube love charts. for massage. <laughs> you have, you have Playdata charts, radio monitoring charts, and some gist and interview videos. Okay. Take care, guys. All right. Bye, guys. Play data monitors all radio stations in your region and chart songs by number of plays. Welcome to the PDC podcast.